Ladies and gentlemen, the world's number one sports and recreation podcast. Uh, there's something going on Friday, and the the much I said that we were going to get big interviews on this show, and uh, finally, we have someone. I don't want to take all the credit for this person's success, but I'm willing to take eighty or ninety percent. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we have a champion in our midst. Her name is Rhea Ripley. Uh, Rhea, welcome to Cheap Heat. It's an honor to have you. Thanks for having me. Um, this is pretty cool. You're you're like. Having a good time right now, it seems. Would that be a fair a fair way of describing where we're at in May 2023 for Rhea Ripley? Um, yeah, uh, I'm definitely having the time of my life right now. Every time I go out there and walk through the curtain and see everyone, even just even backstage with the boys, I'm always having the time of my life. Uh, having uh, Priest and Finn and especially Dom Dom with me, it's uh, definitely made my time at work a lot more chaotic but fun <laughs> um okay i kind of want to work backwards um you told me a story uh the last time i saw you that i hadn't heard maybe you've told told it elsewhere at this point but about how this whole thing started with dom um and it, it was as simple as like an eddie guerrero shirt can you can you tell the story that you told me about kind of that night and how things came about yeah so um first I had that number one contenders match that fatal four-way and I need myself in the face so I pushed my tooth back and and rocked myself a little bit uh I knew that I had a few weeks off and I was like I know I'm coming back soon and I got told that I was coming back when it was Ray's uh, anniversary so me being the little menace that I am I was like you know what <laughs> I might as well come back with a bang and I ordered a Eddie Guerrero shirt, uh, the I'm Your Papi one, and I was like, I'm just going to wear it and see what happens. And I wore it, and the internet exploded. <laughs> People went wild. Uh, they started calling me Papi um, and all of that fun stuff, and I sort of just kept running with it. Uh, eventually, I was like, yo, we should make some more shirts, but they were like, maybe we'll change it to Mommy. So that's where, like, Mommy came from, but that was the start of this whole wild ride with uh, Dominic and the Mysterio family with the Judgment Day sort of thing. So what was your what was your relationship with Dom prior to that? Like just friendly colleagues who would see each other in catering and say hello? Like what level were you guys at? Yeah, it was pretty much just that. Like we had a very working relationship. Like I didn't really talk to him. All that we really did was say hi, like how are you? But that was it. Like I barely got to mingle with him. I didn't really get to know him, uh, especially because I was more just in the women's division where like now I get to experience and make friends with like guys as well because I'm actually working with them. Um, but our friendship sort of just like bloomed and then, you know, I ended up beating him up a couple of times and choking him out with my legs and it's where this romance story started. <laughs> like any like any true love does, you know? Um it's it's pretty fascinating because you guys have both sort of blossomed at the same time. Um, you know, your story on the on Raw and SmackDown, Raw essentially first, was an interesting one because you came up just before the pandemic. And it, at first, it appeared to me like you were on the trajectory, like you were sort of expected to be. You're NXT Women's Champion. You get a match at WrestleMania with... Um, Charlotte right away, which of course was an odd WrestleMania. And I, I'm kind of, kind of curious about how you look back at that. Um, but then, I don't know, at some point things just didn't seem to be progressing the way I expected them to. It seemed like there was some sort of disconnect in the Rhea Ripley character. Um, am, am I wrong for seeing it that way? Did you feel it that way? Because it seems like now you found yourself, but it did seem like there was a gap when it was like your footing wasn't so sure. Yeah, there, were, there definitely was a time where I wasn't really sure what was going on or how to do my job in a way. Um, I I did get to go to the main um, while having the NXT championship and then obviously I had the title match with many uh, in the COVID era. Sorry, my dog's joining me. Oh, there. hello. <laughs> You're such an attention seeker. What, what's, your, what's your dog's name? This is Barry. How many do you have? I have two. And what's the other one? Luna. Barry and Luna. Oh, I knew a Luna as well. Hey, Barry. You seem like a great guy. He is a great guy. <laughs> but um, 
yeah, I don't know. There was like this weird period where I didn't really know how the crowd was reacting to me because there was no crowd in attendance. So that sort of started like the downhill spiral for me in a way. Um, I didn't know how they were reacting. And then I had that whole championship match with Asuka once I finally debuted as a Raw superstar. Um, and I wasn't sure how they were going to react to me. And I sort of just kept plotting along and I got told like a million different things on how to be and how to act and what they want from me. And I sort of got lost in that again, like I did when I first came over here to America for the first Mae Young Classic. Um, I sort of got lost in just trying to do everything right and what people were telling me to do, but it wasn't really what was best for me because it wasn't me being me. And the reason that the mommy thing and <laughs> Rhea Ripley, the name is blowing up right now, is because I get to go out there and I do get to just have fun and I'm doing my own thing. I'm sort of just reacting on the fly and just doing things that I would do being a menace. Like if I was a child again, I would be doing these things. Um, but yeah, there was a, a specific time where I just, I got lost in like the tag team division stuff as well. I know I tagged with Nikki ASH and then I came out after we broke up and was like, I'm going to be a singles competitor. And then I was right back in the tag team division with Liv. And um, I had a great time with both of them girls. I really did. But it wasn't what Rhea Ripley is all about. I'm not really a tag team uh, sort of person. Uh, I'm definitely more of a solo, even though, yes, it is fun. It is very, very fun. I'm definitely well, and you are and you are in a tag team of sorts right now, but it but you get the best of both worlds. You kind of get to have this partner and also be a single star. Exactly. And that's why I think the judgment days work so well. Um I, I love I love tagging with my boys. I love tagging with Dom. Uh we have a lot of fun, but mommy's a singles competitor. That's, <laughs> that's why mommy's a champion. <laughs> I 100% I agree. Uh, mommy is certainly champion. And it's, um, yeah, it's it's very, very cool. It's very cool to see your like comfort level. I said this week on, on the show I did earlier this week that I'm getting the sense now when I see you guys, someone posted a video and you like commented on it on Twitter, uh, a video of you guys just walking, like maybe it was in Puerto Rico or whatever. And it was just the two of you going to an event together. And I was like, oh, they've like found their actual interpersonal swagger. You know what I mean? Because like at first, how well can you guys know each other? Like, yeah, you everyone could tell there was something there. But like you, I can feel the real relationship now that exists between you. And it mm -hmm. makes the whole thing just hit on a different level. Um, how... How far do you think this thing could go? And like, how, like, do, do you have any interest? Do you even think about life beyond the judgment day at this point? Or are you just like fully enjoying this and want this ride to go as long as it can go? Yeah, I really want it to go for as long as it can go. Uh, I'm loving every single minute of being at work when the boys are there. Um, I think that we could really drag it out and have it go for a long, long time. At the end of the day, Yes, we are the most random group of people. We have an <laughs> Irishman, a Puerto Rican, a Mexican and an Australian, but we click so well. And it feels so strange when I'm at work and I know that the boys aren't there. Um, like when I was going to SmackDown for a little bit and they weren't there, they were on the UK tour and I was like, I don't know how to act right now. Like I miss my family, I miss my boys. So, I really want to see it progress and just like grow. And if we get new members, we get new members. Um, but I want to see the Judgment Day become like this massive faction within the WWE that is so unstoppable. And I think that we can really accomplish that. Um, at the end of the day, I want to see my boys with championships while I hold mine. Um, it seems like to some degree, and I don't mean this as like a knock, but it is the word that comes to mind. They seem like having a team sort of feels like a bit of a security blanket in a place that can be pretty scary to be alone in. You know, and I, I think like Charlotte, for example, who I know respects the hell out of you, is is the first person to sort of talk about a lot of the insecurity she's had and dealing with it and just fighting through what it is to be your guys, uh, to have your guys' job and have to perform on live television for millions of people every week. 
I have to imagine like it is really nice to have a sort of built in support system. Like it almost seems like a bit of a cheat code, you know, to get to have people that you can lean on. Uh, am I right? Yeah, no, you're, you're very, very accurate with that. Um, having the boys, especially out there when we're doing a promo, let's say, I was always someone that was very, very terrified of going out there and speaking on the microphone. As soon as I joined the Judgment Day when it was me, Edge and Damien, I instantly felt more confident within myself and more at ease because I knew that if anything were to happen, they would be there to help me. Um, and it's the same now when I'm out there with Dom and Finn and Priest. Um, I feel like I can fall back on them guys if I do get lost or do get uncomfortable or if something happens, something gets changed. Like we all, we're all there to help each other. Um, well, and wrestling is like an improv game, right? This is ultimately improv performance. And it's a lot better and easier and more fun to do improv with someone else than to have, like, dude, if I have to do a radio show, like, a, a more than, like, a half hour by myself, mm -hmm. it's not fun. Like, it's just I not. Just don't have things to say. Like, and you just, yeah, you just don't have things to say. And when you have other people to bounce off of and their personalities, um, how often are you guys making each other crack up, though? Because I do feel like between you and Dom, there have to be lots of times when you're like, I mean, the, the dude says and does ridiculous things. At, at times, depending on where his hair is, he looks ridiculous. Like, he, he's just, Dom has so much going on. Do you have any memories of specifically being like, oh, my God, I'm about to lose it? Um, <laughs> I mean, pretty much all the time. We're always trying to make each other break and laugh and um, just to, like, make sure that everyone feels comfortable when they're having fun in a way. Um. <laughs> Oh man, there's been so many times. I can't even narrow it down. I know that like a lot of the time on the outside, like Priest and I will just like joke around with each other. We'll say some outrageous things and also with Finn and Dom as well. Um, I've got him smiling a couple of times on our entrance. Um, <laughs> <laughs> tell me about the, um, tell me about the dinner scene, about the, uh, the holiday, was it Valentine's Day? The Valentine's Day date that you guys had. Yeah, that thing was uh, quite hilarious. <laughs> um, that was a lot of fun to cause that sort of mayhem with the Mysterio family. Um, at the end of the day, like Ray stole our table. That that yeah. it, no no. Uh, ultimately, you guys were in the right. I agree a hundred percent. You guys, were. Were, yeah, like, you were yes, in the right. Yes, Dom put it down under the Mysterio name, but at the end of the day, Ray called and was like, yeah, we're, we're on our way. And he took our table. So of course we we're gonna kick him out. Like, that's just what happens. Like move, it's Valentine's day. This is our first Valentine's day date. And we want to eat here. This is why we booked it here. Um, but he did give me a little bit of a chuckle when he wanted chicken fingers at a nice restaurant. Right. Well, you know, listen, he's a simple <laughs> man. No one said he's a complicated man. Um, definitely not. It's great. What a... Uh... <laughs> What did you expect uh, from this past weekend in Puerto Rico with Zelina? Um, I, I know that like she almost seemed kind of caught off guard by just how crazy the response was for her. Um, it's an interesting spot because you are sort of the it person in the division right now. You're the champ. She's the challenger. But, you know, that moment was very much about Zelina Vega. Were you prepared for it? Did anyone tell you what to expect? And how do you go about handling that when you got to do your job and be champ, but you also want to make sure that this person, your dance partner, shines when they're supposed to be shining? Um, I was honestly living in that moment. Uh, we had the press conference earlier that day, and I heard the reaction Zelina got when she went out there and it was loud and I was I was very excited for her. But then I went out there and it all turned into mommy chant and I was like, oh, <laughs> it's cool to hear, don't get me wrong. But then I was like thinking about later that night and he's back. And I was like, oh no, like hopefully mommy chants don't drown anything out because I know how special this event is to her because I know how special it would be for me to be able to perform in Australia. So I can only relate to that. Um, especially since she's had never had like that big opportunity and she's worked so hard for it. This was like her WrestleMania moment in a way. Um, so when I went out there first and I got the mommy chance and I was like, oh no, like we'll see what happens. Once her music hit, 
the crowd just like turned on me instantly yeah. and I had to like sort of talk to myself and I was like yo like they are so hot for her right now I could only imagine the emotions that she's feeling right now and then seeing her walk out with the flag go to her family hug them get in the ring and then get so emotional live on camera when I know that she's not a very like emotional showing person, especially that sort of emotion. She's normally just a little angry gremlin. Um, <laughs> it was it was hard for me to sort of play off it in the way that Rhea Ripley would because... Because you feel it personally so much? Yes, exactly. Like I wanted to smile for her. I really did, but I'm like, no, nah, I wouldn't smile. No, I you would sure smile. wouldn't. You would do exactly what you did. Yes. But I'm I'm very happy she got that moment and she got that opportunity. And I know that it's going to be something that she's not going to forget for the rest of her life. And I'm glad that I could be the person in the ring with her to sort of just like help her get to the point where everyone is just like believing in her in such a static way. So am, um, I, am I wrong? Did I misread? It looked to me like right after the pin, it looked like you put your arm up and and said something. I I could be totally reaching, and that's just what it looked like to me. Do you have any recollection of that, or did I make that up? I might have. I'm yeah, or sure. or is that common anyway, and you don't even know what you would have said? So most of the time, I black out, and I don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> do you really? Do you really? Do you really feel like you're like not here altogether? Yeah, dude. Like. It's so wild because I feel like I snap into a different person and every now and then I'll snap back and then I'll snap back into Rhea Ripley. But a lot of the time, like I have to watch back whatever I've done on TV or anything really, because I don't actually know what I've said or what I've done. And it reminds me of what's happened. Like even just watching the press conference back, I was like, I have no idea what I just said. Like, I, what did I say to Zelina? Like I just blacked out and started talking and I watched it back and I was like, oh, that's were funny. you okay, were you okay with it? Yeah, yeah, it was good. <laughs> okay. but I was just like, I just kept going and going. I was talking so fast. I said I was going to pretzel her ass, and I was like, oh, there she is. There's there's Rhea Ripley. <laughs> now, and, and by the way, I wanted to point out you made a good point. You made a really good point about Zelina because she is such a pro and is so buttoned up as a character that that is what kind of made it hit different. Is you don't see her sort of completely. That was a real moment. There's nothing performative about it at that point. You're just letting it be. And you're right. Like you're used to seeing her. I mean, she looks, she's flawless. Like everything about her, her whole thing is put together yeah. really perfectly. And to see her sort of breaking there was, was intense. Now you were saying you, you sort of get lost and like black out. Are, do you get confused about like what your name is? Or like if someone comes up to you on the street and says, Hey, what's your name? Is your natural reaction at this point? Do you, to say your name or is it to say Rhea? What comes I, first to I your mind? I say Rhea, always. So meeting a stranger, even if they didn't know, even if they weren't a fan, they just were curious about who you were, you think you'd say Rhea at this point? Yep, I, I always say Rhea. Even ordering at Starbucks, it's Rhea. Everything. Because how do you... How do, <laughs> is that weird? Do you miss Demi? Like, is that... How many people call you by your real name? Not many. Um... I think there's maybe maybe possibly four people here that call me Demi, apart from like my mom and stuff back home. Um, so I don't really hear the name Demi too often. I think that's why I'm so used to Rhea. And Rhea is such a confident person where in my everyday life, like I am quite shy and I'm quiet. So I want to bring Rhea into my normal life as well. I want her confidence. So I think I just live through my character sometimes because it's the more confident version of myself that I don't get to be all the time. Um, I, I, I don't want to, I, I always hate ruining the, I never want to ruin the image that people have of someone, but it is funny that you are such a, a badass. And at times I hate to say it, I'm sorry, bad person because I mean, <laughs> people would probably say, I'm sorry to report this, but most people would probably say that you're one of the nicest people in in wwe um and i'm sure you have heard that before um you know it's it's so much so that like you know we know that the women's division can be a, a competitive place and we know that there hasn't always been you know in the last few years there's been their share of mm -hmm. real life issues that exist 
Yeah. I, I've noticed that the two new stars, you know, real future stars of the women's division that have jumped off the table. And I'm sure there are other ones, by the way, as well. Liv's a big star and Raquel's uh, a big star. Um, but you and Bianca obviously have have jumped way out their head. And it seems like in some ways it feels like a bit of a new chapter for the division. And that you, and please feel free to break news here and tell us, in fact, that everybody hates you. But <laughs> I believe it seems that you and Bianca are both like really quite beloved in the locker room and all seem to have a good relationship with most everyone. Um, is that, is that a fair assessment? Yeah. I mean, I don't want to ruin Ray Ripley for everyone, but like, <laughs> but I feel like the way that the women's division is going now, we're all there to help the division grow. And that's, I think the difference where instead of it being, a competition 24 seven, like, yes, there is still a little bit of a competition, but it's majority just us wanting to grow and prove to everyone that the women can do what the guys can do. And we deserve the time that the guys get and we deserve the opportunities that the guys get. Um, so I think that's why like we all sort of just get along because we all have the same goal. And uh, Bianca and I were in, that spot in the business where we can speak up and we can try and help more than some others can. And I think that's why people like us so much. Cause like we're, we're not there just for ourselves. We're there for everyone else as well. So we're all trying to build each other up so we can have real competitors, real competition, uh, real <laughs> epic matches, like great storylines. We want, all that, but we want it for everyone and we want everyone to be protected at the same time. Um, and I think that the women respect that and they appreciate that. And that's why I guess Bianca and I uh, loved so much, you know, because we can actually speak up for everyone and, and get what people want. Um, I, I feel like Bianca's in like, in, in some ways, I wonder if Bianca, I mean, obviously she's killing it, um, but I wonder if Bianca's almost, um, jealous of the character you get to play because Bianca has to be perfect all the time. I mean, is there some relief? I have heard from superstars before that having to be a perpetual good guy can be challenging. Like coming up with ways to do it and be entertaining is really hard. Is it easier and, and more comfortable for you being in the spot that you're in right now? Um, Definitely. I feel like in this day and age, people will love the bad guy. Um, it's very hard to get people to love you and cheer for you when you're doing the right thing and you've always got a smile on your face and you're just trying to abide by the rules and sort of make people like you because then it makes them not like you. So it's very difficult being a baby face. Um, <laughs> for me, I love being the real Ripley that you see right now. I wish that people would boo me more often but I understand why they don't at the same time because being bad is cool. It's what you see in movies these days. You're always like, damn, like that guy's the baby face, really? Like, is he really trying to save people? Because he's acting, yeah. he's acting a bit like a prick. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. But how do you how do you manage then though if people start cheering? This is sort of the ultimate problem. Like, mm -hmm. you start hearing the cheers. A, you're a human being with uh, with an ego. Um, we all live in a constant validation cycle of social media. I'm sure you hear the cheers and it feels good. How do you not like fall in love with that and allow it to mess up your character? Because like you don't want to be, I've heard the greats talk about, you know, not falling in love with that, continuing to be a real heel, mm -hmm. not someone who's playing for the, like me, I'm a heel. Cause then at that point you're no longer that. Yeah. Um, I feel like for me, Sorry, my dog's crying. Um, do, you wanna, do you wanna do you need to check? Or the, oh she or he's crying right in front of you. Crying at me because I'm not giving him attention. I get it, Barry. <laughs> mine's oh, mine's probably at the door. <laughs> really? <laughs> hold on, I'm gonna check. Let's see, hold on. Oh my goodness. Look at that face. That's bear. <laughs> Bear. Yeah. There's that's the other one. one. Here's the other one. Say hi. And that's Rocky. Oh my God, so cute. Rocky, that's a champion. 
He's super impressed. He's and by guy. the way, and by the way, I told you his mother is in love with you. You you have my fiance. You've won her over. <laughs> I know she's I think supposed I have a lot of people's fiancés. <laughs> So many different kinds, too. And in no. so many different ways. Oh, I know. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah. So what do you do, though? What do you do to to manage to not kind of slip into being too liked? Like, do you have to do something every once in a while to remind people that you're really an asshole? Like, well, what do you do? Yeah. So for me, it's sort of easy to get back to a, a point when the, when the guys are wrestling because – when people see me hit another man and they can't get me back or they choose not to, they hate that. They instantly want to see me get hit as well. Um, so that's something that definitely helps in a way. And then having Dom there, he's like the ultimate heat magnet. So like he really is. He he really is, and he's doing such a good job. Like I'm honestly so bloody proud of him. It's unbelievable. But having him next to me, like. I play off of him and the closer I get to him, the more people hate it. I don't know if it's like a jealousy thing or just a hate thing because it's dumb, but I try and work with that. And then like, I'll, I'll really rev it up and just like, <laughs> my, my Twitter game has been on point lately. So that's been helping. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I like I like you staying as much there as you can. Like it, it, it's a little thing, but like, I'm not gonna lie. It can annoy me. It can annoy me as a fan when talent like completely disregards who they are on TV, on social media, it's, it's, it's a little too connected. You know, it's, yeah. it's hard to have complete, like, listen, it's one thing for you to sit down and have an interview where it's like, this is a conversation about what I do, et, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But when you're getting consumed on social media, like so much of it is still the show. So it's odd then to be like, Oh, she's like, you know, she's picking daisies with Barry. Like I, I, I want to see you sometimes just be a jerk on social as well. Yeah. And I feel like, because my social media, for some reason, absolutely blew up and got extremely popular out of nowhere. I'm guessing it's the mommy thing. Dude, uh, you're, you're, the other day I, I, I tagged, I tagged you. I think in a no, no, I don't remember what happened, but I, I saw a TikTok of yours, mm -hmm. and every single one you, you don't have that many TikTok posts, mm -hmm. but every post has insane engagement, like it's really insane. Cool. It's so crazy. Like I. I don't go on TikTok. I don't like TikTok. I don't want another social media app on my phone. Like I really didn't want to get it, but work was like, yo, like you're so popular on TikTok. You have to get it. So they made me get it. And I think in like three days of having it without even posting anything, I got more followers than like Charlotte, Roman, Sasha, like all these people. And I was like, what the hell just happened? Like, what what's going on here? I, I, but, why, why, I wonder why you why that happened. Like, I mean, obviously, I know you're popular, but I wonder why it skyrocketed in such a way. Like, why your character connects there so well? I don't know. I feel like it's definitely like the LGBTQ plus community. They <laughs> they're some of my biggest supporters, and I, I absolutely love them for that. But they've been making all these TikTok videos of like Rhea compilations and just like all these random ones of them stimping over mommy so i know that they got popular and then i'm guessing they just ended up posting like she's finally got tiktok because they were asking on twitter for the longest time like when are you going to get a tiktok when are you going to get a tiktok and i was like never um so i think the the word got out that i got it and they all just jumped on it super quickly um has that always been a thing for you did you always connect with the lgbtq plus community or is it more recent um i feel like it's definitely been since I've changed my look. Um, the first May Young Classic, not so much. The second May Young Classic, it really started. Um, I don't really know why, um, but I love it. So <laughs> I can't complain. I think it's amazing and I love seeing the edits that they make and they really do keep me very entertained on social media. <laughs> I'm available and also looking for huge fan bases if anyone wants to get on board. By the way, you have 1.8 million already on TikTok. Really? Yeah, 1.8 million. By the way, that's more than when I looked the other day. And every one of your posts, babe, you should, if you want to see an example of insane, my, my fiance and I always talk, she's a, a photographer and we like uh -huh. talk about engagement and how annoying social media is generally. It, it, maybe if I posted a back workout like this, this could, 
There we go. By the way, maybe this is a good time for you to come clean because I do think I did notice when I saw you at the gym that day, you were kind of trying to creep on my workout routine and <laughs> and and learn, you know, just a little <laughs> bit. So like I just it's cool. Borrow what you want to borrow, but like just give credit where credit is due. You know what I'm saying? I got you. Oh, I'll, I'll give I'll give credit for the hip thrust that I was doing. <laughs> now I, I gotta say, so I I like I was joking earlier, I do take a lot of credit for for um jokingly on the show for being saying that you're a future Hall of Famer and all these things. And I always felt like I felt like really cool and, and proven right when you've gone on this recent run. And then I like looked at your accolades today before you came on. I was like on your Wikipedia page. And I was like, oh, it's not really that interesting that I thought she was going to become a future Hall of Famer. She's already done everything. You, you've won every women's title. You're the only person who's won every single available women's title. Mm -hmm. um, crazy. Which, which is which is crazy. You're 26. Yeah. Like, how do you how do you and listen? Titles aren't everything. We know that. But like, how do you continue to stay hungry and motivated when you're at this stage at 26 i can't really fathom that have you thought about what you do to to keep the fire there um i think for me the main thing is like i never really set a goal because if you set a goal you accomplish that and that's the finish line sort of thing um you work until you get to your goal i have left my goals wide open i just want to see how far i can go in this business and how many things i can accomplish and how much history i can make um, and I think that's what's really kept me going because it never feels like enough. I feel like there's so many different avenues that I could take, uh, so many different things that I could test out and try. Um, and I'm very eager to like just keep going and keep pushing until I technically can't push anymore. <laughs> does, does like the things like the, I don't want to say the typical WWE aspirational route, but yes, yeah, sort of. Do, do movies interest you? Like, is acting a thing that's there for you or no? Um, I mean, it could be, quite possibly. Um, I feel like if I were to do a movie, it would have to be like an action or a horror. I don't think I could really do anything else. But I've definitely thought about it. And I, I did acting classes for like two years, I want to say. And um, I did get offered um, a movie. But... I just, I couldn't do it because my schedule was just so hectic and I wasn't going to have any time off to do it. So like I'd legit never be home and I'd never get to see my dogs. And um, yeah, I just, I couldn't do it. But maybe, maybe after wrestling, there might be one or two that I could do. Um, but I really want to go back to Australia. That's, that's my main goal, I guess. And, and what does that mean? Do you mean to live? Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind going back there to live and looking after my parents while they're getting older and just spending time with them that I've missed out spending through these years being over here. Well, you've got time on that though. I saw your mom is very young. Your parents are your parents are appear to be chilling. But yeah. but how do you but so how much do you miss home? Like Australia's so far dude, Australia's so far. I, I get homesick just thinking about going on vacation there. Like you you really have put yourself in as far away a place almost as humanly possible. Yeah. Um, is that is that hard for you? I know you got to go back recently, and I also know you had a a loss in your family, and I was really sorry to see that. Um, but like, what's that like, and and how often are you able to go see them? Um, I don't really get to go back too often. Um, it's it's very hard being this far away from everything that I know and everyone that I love. Uh, I don't really get to see them too often. I'm I'm grateful that this year has been very kind to me but then also not very kind in a way um because i have been able to go back twice this year and i had my parents and my uncle come to wrestlemania so i've seen them three times this year which is nice since the year's just pretty much started um but apart from that like i hadn't seen my dad in four years um which was really really difficult i, I love my dad i'm definitely a daddy's girl um, but I got to see my mom. She came down for a little bit. My sister came down for a little bit, made my life very, very difficult, but I love her. Um, but how, yeah. how old is your sister again? She is, what year is it? She's 23. And she, I remember you saying she has not, her, her, her career path is nothing like yours. No, nothing. She's actually 
on I think it's Hamilton Island in Australia, which is a, around Queensland area, and she's working with the flight attendants. I think she's working for the airline, so completely different. <laughs> um, and yeah, I was really sorry to see about your grandmother, and I know that must have been really hard to be away. Um, but you were able to get get back and be there and be with your family some. Yeah, I got a week at home, which was really, really nice. Obviously, it wasn't great circumstances. Um, my nonna, she meant absolutely everything to me. Um, she's one of my favorite people. She was always funny. And I remember last time I went down, which was February, she was healthy and kicking it and just like so full of life and sassiness. Um it was actually really, really nice to see her that way and have that be like the last memory of her um, because I think she was honestly holding out to see me and my sister again. And then even when she um, did pass, like I, I, I couldn't like FaceTime or anything. I just, I had to talk to her though. And once I talked to her, uh, she couldn't say anything back, but um it was like 30 minutes after that, that she had passed away. So I hold it close to my heart knowing that like, I did get to talk to her again. I did get to see her again. And I'm thankful that she was holding out for me and my sister. Cause um, she's one of my favorite people. And it's just hard, like being this far away from home and, and getting to go back every few years and seeing how much your family and people you love have sort of deteriorated and they're just like getting older and getting sick. Um, but it makes the grind so much more worth it in a way because you're doing it to make them proud and they get to like watch you. Like my, my Zildine, like my uncle, he, um, he has Parkinson's and mm -hmm. he got real bad the last few years and I hadn't been able to see him. But the one thing that, makes him so happy is watching me wrestle and watching me do my thing with WWE and seeing his face absolutely light up when they put you two on, they, they type in Rhea Ripley. It's, um, it's very, very heartwarming and it def definitely makes the grind worth it in a way. And they're able to watch you every week. Like you're, you're on in Aust Australia every week and they can see everything you're doing. Obviously they follow along on social, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, they have um the WWE Network sort of thing over there, which is a binge now. So they get to watch it whenever they want. Um, well, listen, if the if the Cheap Heat audience didn't already love you prior to today, I know they do now. Um, thanks for making time. This has been a lot of fun to watch. I I, I think I've told you that I, I saw you for the first time at the May Young a few years ago, mm -hmm. and I was sort of like, I don't know who that is, but <laughs> there that's that's there's something going on here i don't know who that is and it's like man it's a blink i couldn't believe when i looked recently and saw you were 26 i was so yeah. confused because i was like she was just 20 i remember she was like 20 years old like she was this like not to say you're not still a young phenom but like you were a kid like an absolute kid so it time flies and here we are multi-time really, champion etc cetera, etc cetera. It, it really does fly i'm 27 this year when's, when's your birthday October. <laughs> October, you're 27. Wow. Or you're look at you. You're real grown up. Yeah. <laughs> in, in, in just a mere 20 years, you'll be mine. Um, Rhea, <laughs> not quite, but still. Uh, Rhea, Barry, thank you both very, very much. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Thanks for having us.